Hello and welcome to the Met Office 10 day trend. Over the next 10 days, most of us will have cloudy, windy, mild weather. There will be brief colder interludes, but they'll only be brief. For example, under an area of high pressure as we begin Thursday, there'll be a touch of frost in places, mainly southern Britain, a few pockets of fog. But there is milder air arriving from the northwest, along with cloudier conditions. That cloud slowly sinking south through the day, a few spots of rain, but most places dry. Seven degrees on Thursday in the south, nine on Friday. You can see the temperatures rising through the next few days. A lot of cloud cover again on Friday, best of any brighter spells in the east where the cloud will be broken up as it moves over the mountains. Now on Friday night, high pressure will sink away to the southwest and that will allow more weather fronts to sink south. Again, bringing areas of cloud, bringing a few spots of rain, the wettest weather really across western hills and it will turn increasingly wet across central and northern Scotland on Saturday night. Again, mild, these winds from the northwest bringing in temperatures that are relatively high compared to average, but it's going to be unsettled in the north on Saturday night. Rain moving through and then strengthening winds. A blustery day for all of us on Sunday. A few breaks in the cloud again to the east. Spots of rain over western hills, but across central and northern Scotland, that's where the winds will really pick up. Gales on Sunday. Now into Monday, the winds change direction and you can see the impact of that. These blue colours sinking south across the country as we start off next week. But they don't last long. Warm front out to the west, returning us to square one. High pressure still influencing our weather, albeit at a distance. It's to the southwest of the country as we start off next week. The jet stream fairly active, swerving around this area of high pressure and bringing areas of low pressure towards northern Britain. Now, as that happens, we're going to see a return to bouts of wind and rain, especially in the north, but we'll also see these warmer colours spread in across the map around the middle of next week. There are some indications from computer simulations that we'll see the jet stream sink southwards across all the country by the end of next week, bringing colder northerly winds. But, of course, by that stage, it's increasingly uncertain. What we can say for next week is that it will be a chilly start. It will then turn unsettled, but milder for a few days around the middle of the week, with the possibility of it turning colder again later. But there's a question mark there because well, the position and the strength of the jet stream, whilst it's crucial in steering areas of low pressure and steering mild and cold air around the globe, it is also influenced itself by the interactions with that cold and mild air and areas of low pressure. And these complex interactions play out amongst each other and become increasingly chaotic after about a week or so and difficult to model using even very powerful computers. What we can do, though, is we can assess the odds of either an active jet stream bringing mild but unsettled weather or an inactive jet stream increasing the risk of colder air from elsewhere. We can assess the odds of that through the rest of winter by looking at some other influences on the jet stream elsewhere in the globe. And one of those influences lies far away and high in the sky. Now, the jet stream typically circles the globe at about 10 kilometers. Much of our weather happens beneath the jet stream in this slice of atmosphere called the troposphere. Above the troposphere, above the jet stream, clear blue skies, stratosphere, between 10 and 50 kilometers high. Now, the stratosphere, despite having very little weather, is hugely important. Typically, above the North Pole in the stratosphere, the temperature plummets during the autumn and early winter, down to minus 70 or minus 80 degrees. This pool of deeply cold air is known as the polar vortex, and this stratospheric polar vortex becomes locked in place early winter by a ring of very strong winds, just like our own jet stream, but lying much higher in the sky. It also typically flows at the same direction as our own jet stream, west to east, helping to enhance it. It acts as a tailwind for our own jet stream. Now, the temperature above the North Pole at about 30 kilometers, this is the average temperature. It drops in the winter and then rises in the spring and summer, as you'd expect. But sometimes, for example, earlier this year, the temperature can rise rapidly. 60 degrees or so in just a few days. This is called sudden stratospheric warming, and it can have impacts on our weather down below. And that's because it can influence the direction of the winds surrounding the stratospheric polar vortex. 
when the air warms at 30 kilometers above the North Pole, the winds go into reverse. Instead of going in the same direction as the jet stream, they start to go in the opposite direction. Now, like I say, at 30 kilometers, when the winds are going west to east, the jet stream tends to be influenced, it tends to be enhanced. But if the winds above it reverse because of this significant warming above the North Pole, well, it can act against the jet stream. It can make it weaker. And I say it can because nothing by this stage is guaranteed. It's just one of many influences on the jet stream itself. So what looks likely because of this sudden stratospheric warming way above the North Pole earlier this year is that for the rest of winter beyond 10 days, we may have a less active jet stream. And that increases the likelihood of cold spells. Not a two month outbreak of easterly winds by any means. It can come in all sorts of shapes and mean, and it all depends on the vagaries of different weather patterns from day to day. So detail is not possible just yet. It's only when we get an indication of these cold spells within seven days or so that we will, of course, let you know about it. And over the next week to 10 days, it looks likely that we'll have typical changeable winter weather. So stay tuned. As always, we will keep you updated right here.